Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show how you can use Live Link to bring animation over from an external system, in this case uh, Cascader, into Unreal Engine without needing to run simulate mode in order to have it active. So we want to run our Live Link animation in Editor. So in this example I have Cascader running here, and this is the pro version, and so it allows under the synchronization under the synchronization menu, uh, Live Link to be activated. So in Cascadeur, this is my little animation here. And uh, ignore the animation, it's not all that great. I'm just messing around with learning Cascadeur. Uh, but if I go to synchronization and activate Live Link, then this animation, this skeletal mesh essentially, is being transmitted from Cascadeur out to the network or within my local machine. And it's being transmitted in Unreal Engine's native live link protocol so we'll be able to receive that data and apply it in uh, Unreal Engine itself. And so one thing I'll just point out is that when creating this animation I chose the Quinn character in Cascader. So this character already has the identical skeletal structure and orientations as the Unreal Engine mannequin Quinn. And so I won't need to do any retargeting at all. I'm just taking this data and applying it to the Quinn skeletal mesh for it to work in Unreal. So uh, now that we've got this transmitting via live link, and I'm just going to leave it running in the background and just kind of bring this down here. Um, now we can get to work in Unreal Engine. Now this is just the environment for the Slay demo. You can get uh, Slay from Fab, just search for that, and uh, you'll find it. This whole environment is there. It's usually used with the Windwalker Echo character, but for this case, again, I would just want to use the mannequin. So I added the third-person templates. To do that, I just went to Content Browser, clicked Add, Add Feature Content Pack, and chose third person, add to project. I've already done that, so I've got the third person folder, and uh, more importantly, I've got the characters folder. Now, before I dig too deep into this, I do want to make sure that Live Link is active and running. So I'm going to go ahead to the edit menu and choose plugins and type in Live Link. Link, there we are. So Live Link is active, and so that means the plugin is ready to use. So then I can go to Window, Virtual Production, and choose Live Link. There it is. And then I want to add a source to this so that I can listen to the Live Link data being sent from Cascader. So I'm going to click on Add Source. Now, Message Bus Source is the native format for Unreal. And sure enough, there is Cascader. It is transmitting its data, so it, it's automatically showing up here now. So I can go ahead and click that. And I have a skeleton coming in, and a green light tells me that fresh data is coming in. So just as a quick note, if I were to uh, look at the background here, and you, we can see Cascaders running. Eh, it's a little slower right now, but it, it'll catch up. If I go hit the space bar in Cascader and hit um, that stops the animation, my green light turns to yellow. That's because Cascader is not actively retransmitting the same frame over and over again. It's only transmitting frames while it's playing animation. So if I click on Cascader and tap space, now it is playing out its animation, and I have a green light indicating that data is coming in for this source. Okay. So with that set up, I can close this, and maybe we'll just give ourselves a little more space here. Okay, so let's get to work on making our live link work here in the scene. I'm going to double click on the characters folder from the third person example, and then double click mannequins, and then meshes, and we're going to work with the Quinn's skeletal mesh. Now, to put her to use, I'm going to create a blueprint actor, so I'll right click and choose blueprint class, and click on the actor button. This gives us a new blueprint actor asset. I will name this BPA underscore for blueprint actor, and then I'll name it Quinn, since Quinn is the skeletal mesh that I'm putting into this. Control S to save it, double click to open, and here is our blank slate of a blueprint. Now we'll want to add Quinn so she can receive the data. So dragging the skeletal mesh into the outline for the blueprint, maybe we'll just pan out a little bit here in the blueprint viewport. And then selecting Quinn here in the outline, we want to go over to the details for the animation and make sure that she's set up to receive live link data. So we are by default using an animation blueprint. And for the anim class, we want to use a live link instance. So live link 
Live Link instance. Now this is available built into Unreal Engine. It's a generic Live Link connection that doesn't care about what skeleton it is being applied to. It's just going to stream the data into the skeleton and hope the skeleton is uh, compatible with the data. So that takes care of setting up the skeletal mesh. I'll go ahead and compile and save. And now we want to set up a blueprint in our event graph that's going to connect the Quinn skeletal mesh to the live length data anytime we initialize the animation system for this blueprint actor. So we'll go to event graph and it goes to some empty space here. And the event that we want to respond to is that we're initializing the animation. So I'm going to right click and say on anim initial. Yep, there it is. Add on anim initialized. So this is an event that gets triggered by Unreal anytime a actor needs to be initialized for animation. So we have that. And then we'll want to be able to specify which live link stream, which subject is going to feed data into Quinn. So let's get Quinn out here into the event graph. So just drag and drop there. there. And we are going to want the animation instance. Again, if I select her, this is the uh, live link instance. The animation class is also called an instance. So let's get anim instance. There we are. So we have that. Oh created another Quinn, so let's go ahead and delete that. And then we'll want to cast this to a special kind of anim instance, a live link anim instance. So we'll pull from the return value and type in cast to live link instance. There we go. And of course we want this to actually fire, so we'll connect the execution pin from the event trigger into this node here. Okay, so now we have defined our uh, live link instance based on our Quinn. So now we want to specify that she receives data from a particular subject. And we also want to make sure that the animation is updated in editor. So as live link instance, we're going to pull from this and we're going to say set subject. Is it set live link? Set subject. Let's try that. There we go. Set subject. So from this live link instance, we want to set a subject. And rather than lock us into any particular subject, what we can do is click and drag off of here and release and just promote this to a variable. So now subject name is a variable. And here it is in our variables list. And I'm just going to click on the closed eye to open that eye. And this will expose this variable in the details panel anytime an actor like this is in our level and we'll be able to uh, specify what subject each copy or each instance of this blueprint should be listening to. So let's go ahead and compile that while we're at it and then uh, right click and drag. So we've got our subject set and the final thing we'll want to do with this is make sure that we are updating the animation in editor. So uh, I'm just going to right click here and say set animation up update, yep, set update animation in editor. So we click on that. And again, it's automatically generating an SKM Quinn. That's fine. We can just use that. And again, we want to connect our execution pins. And of course, it's really important. We want to check this Boolean so that, yes, we do want to update every time data comes in. So let's compile that and save that. And we won't see anything yet because uh, by default we haven't really assigned a value to the subject. We have the default of none and I'm going to leave it that way so that I always have to specify when I drag into the level. But this is it. That's the setup. So we've got Quinn. She's got the uh, live link instance defined as her animation blueprint. And in the event graph we have responded to the on animation initialized. We cast the animation instance for Quinn to live link instance set its subject based on this exposed variable, and set a Quinn to update her animation in editor. Compile, save, close, and let's drag Quinn into the scene. There she is. Uh, for purposes of this, let me just look at the animation. So her back is to us, so I am going to uh, E, rotate the actor, so we have the same approximate orientation as in uh, Cascader here. And finally, we just want to tune her into Cascader. So we should go, yep, sure enough, there is our subject name variable. It's been exposed. So we'll click here, choose skeleton. And there she is, doing our animation.
And that's it. In editor, we're not running simulation. And we can even record this in take recorder, right? So I can go to window, cinematics, take recorder. Uh, she's selected, so let's add her as a source uh, from BPA Quinn. And uh, what I will do, let me just get more screen space here and close the sequence curves. What I'm going to do here is uh, deactivate most of Quinn. I really only want to capture her animation track, so I'll just activate just the animation track down here. And that way we don't have to capture all this other stuff. And scene one, take one. And so we'll just say... Uh, Record three, two, one, boom. We are recording. This is looking good. Let's hit stop. And now we should have an animation of this. So let me go into here and hit space to stop that animation. Go to content browser, content cinematics is the folder that was created by take recorder. Double click, double click takes, double click the date, double click the sub scenes, double click the animation. And there's our animation asset for Quinn. Double click. And there she is doing that animation. And that's everything. So I hope this helps. I have a few other plans on making some other versions of this tutorial, one for metahumans, one for custom characters. Uh, but this hopefully gets you started. Until next time, have fun.